thing about my dad is he was an explorer. Not literally, of course. Literally, he was a geography teacher, but in his mind. And not those TV explorers that drink piss for the cameras, like Bear Grylls. God, what about that one? No, a proper old school explorer. Mungo Park or Shackleton, you know? The blank bits on the map kind of explorer. That's who he really was, inside. When I was little, we'd go into the woods and pretend that we were the first people to ever go there. We'd take our compasses and cheese sandwiches and make our own maps, mark trees with chalk. And he sent me treasure hunts, put an X on the map and I'd have to get us there. And the treasure would always be something like an interesting tree he liked or a river with some notable erosion. And I tried to get him to give me clues, tell me what it was we were looking for, but he'd always just say, we'll know when we get there. And he taught me to figure out north from the stars, the pole star. If you know where north is, you can always find home, he said. The north was his favorite, the North Pole. Explorers like Franklin and Peary hauling sleds over ice. Polar bears and fur and scurvy and Inuit. Have to call them Inuit, not Eskimos, according to dad. And when I was little, I thought that was so ace. We build igloos in the garden and he'd pretend to be a polar bear and chase me around. And I'd try to imagine it. A place where men's tongues froze through their beards, where houses were made out of blocks of ice. The ground under your feet could crack open and swallow you whole. You know how all kids avoid cracks on the pavement? Mine were cracks in the ice. But after a while, I got a bit old for it all. You know, I mean, in any way, it was just pretend exploring. I have all the maps of everything on my phone now. It's all finished. No blank places left. Exploring now is drinking piss for the cameras. He was born at the wrong time, my dad. That's what someone should have said about him at the funeral. And so I took down the maps from my walls and we stopped going on our adventures. I'd sort of forgotten about it. The north and the snow and the beards but now, I take Dad Zern into his office. And there it all is. Maps of the Arctic Circle. Posters of beardy men in thick furs looking moody. Clippings and articles all over the walls on global warming. Books and books and more books with thick, bold fonts on the spines. Old books. Dad's books. And there on his desk is his notebook. His journal. His pen is on the desk next to it. It's okay to read someone's diary if they're dead, right? I mean, we read in Frank's in school. I set dad down on his desk. I sit down. I look at his notebook. And I open. North Pole trip, it says. North Pole trip. And I remember. I remember lying in a makeshift igloo on white sheets for snow. I remember dad saying, one day, one day we'll go, Rory, when you're older. Would you like that? I don't remember saying yes. I flip through the pages, careful plans, weather charts, tour operators, chartered flight companies, Names of strange places, Barneo, Long Year Buen. Cost estimates for two travelers. North Pole trip, it says. And next year.
On the table next to it, a book with a black and white cover, a photograph of a young man with serious facial hair and deep eyes is staring at me. Farthest North by Friedhjorn Nansen. I remember this book. Dad used to read it to me instead of a bedtime story. Some of the pages have been dog-eared, folded down. I opened to one. These underlined passages with blue and black ink. <clears throat> alas, alas, life is full of disappointments. As one reaches one ridge, there is always another, one beyond it, which blocks the view. <laughs> well, who cares? Who cares about disappointments? Suddenly it's all so clear. What to do with him? Dad, you never got to go. But I can take you. 